So for this um, session, we will discuss the presentation of financial statements or our international accounting standards one. So, so we have here, we will tackle nine chapters, but um, first we will develop our attention to chapter one or the financial statements. So financial statements, let's start with the introduction. So financial statements are the structured representation of an entity's financial position and results of its operations, according to uh, chapter one, um, paragraph nine. Financial statements are the end product of the financial reporting process and the means by which the information gathered and processed is periodically communicated to users. The financial statements of an entity pertain only to that entity and not the industry where the entity belongs or the economy as a whole. So general purpose financial statements or GPF, G, GPFS or more known as financial statements are those intended to meet the needs of users who are not in a position to require an entity to prepare reports tailored to their particular information needs. General purpose financial statements cater to, to most of the common needs of a wide range of external users. General purpose financial statements are the subject matter of the conceptual framework and the IFRS. So the purpose of the financial statements, first, we have your primary objective, which is to provide information about the financial position, financial performance, and cash flows of an entity that is useful to a wide range of users in making economic decisions. And the, and the secondary objective is to show the results of management's stewardship over the entity's resources. To meet the objective, financial statements provide information about an entity's assets, liabilities, equity, income and expense, including gains and losses, contributions by and distributions to owners, and last, cash flows. This information, along with other information in the notes, help users assess the entity's prospects for future net cash flow, net cash inflows. So um, the financial statements, are to be prepared by the by the company's management. Okay, so the management is responsible for an entity's financial statements, and the responsibility encompasses the preparation and fair presentation of financial statements in accordance with the IFRS, and internal control over financial reporting, going concern assessment, oversight over the financial reporting process, and review and approval of the financial statements. The responsibilities are expressly stated in a document called Statement of Management's Responsibility for Financial Statements, or SMR, which is attached to the financial statements as a cover letter. This document is signed by the entity's chairman of the board, chief executive officer, and chief financial officer. So the uh, IAS 1, Presentation of Financial Statements, prescribes the basis for the presentation of general purpose financial statements and the, guide, and the guidelines for their structure and the minimum requirements for their content to ensure comparability. So there are two types of comparability. You have your intra-comparability or your horizontal or inter-period, which refers to the comparability of financial statements of the same entity but from one period to another. Intercomparability or dimensional refers to the comparability of financial statements between different entities. Comparability requires consistent, consistency in the adoption and application of accounting policies and in the presentation of financial statements. For example, the use of line item descriptions and account titles either within a single entity from one period to another or across different entities. IAS-1 applies to the presentation and presentation of general purpose financial statements. The recognition measurement and disclosure requirements for specific transactions and other events are set out in other IFRS. The terminology used in IAS-1 is suitable for profit-oriented entities. If nonprofit organizations apply IES-1, they may need to amend the line item 
and financial statement descriptions. Next are your components of the financial statements. So a complete set of financial statements are the following. You have your statement of financial position. You have your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Statement of changes in equity. Statement of cash flows. Notes to financial statements. And additional statement of financial position when required when certain instances occur. An entity may use other titles for the statements. For example, an entity may use the title balance sheet in lieu of statement of financial position or statement of comprehensive income instead of statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. However, an income statement is different from a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income or a statement of comprehensive income. We will elaborate on this later. Reports that are presented outside of the financial statements, such as financial reviews by management, such as in financial reviews by management, environmental reports, and value-added statements are outside the scope of IFRS. So now let's discuss first your statement of financial position. So the statement of financial position shows the entity's financial condition its status of assets, liabilities, and equity as at a certain date. It includes line items that present the following amounts. So these are composition of your statement of financial position, okay? So these are your PPE, investment property, tangible assets, financial assets, investment accounted for using the equity method, biological assets, inventory, trade and other receivables, cash and cash equivalents, assets held for sale, inclu including disposal groups, trade and other payables, provisions, financial li liabilities, current tax liabilities and current tax assets, deferred tax liabilities and deferred tax assets, liabilities included in disposal groups, non-controlling and interests, and last is issued capital reserves attributable to the owners of the parent. IAS-1 does not prescribe the order or format of presenting items in the statement of financial position. The foregoing is a simply a list of items that are sufficiently different in nature or function to warrant separate presentation. Accordingly, an entity may modify the descriptions used and the sequence of their presentation to suit the nature of the entity and its transactions. Moreover, additional line items may be presented whenever relevant to the understanding of the entity's financial position. So the presentation of the financial position may be done in two manners. You have your classified and unclassified manner. In, in classified, presentation shows distinctions between current and non-current assets and current and non-current liabilities. While in unclassified manner, also called based on liquidity, it shows no distinction between current and non-current items. A classified presentation shall be used except when, a, when an unclassified presentation provides information that is reliable and more relevant. When the exemption applies, assets and liabilities are presented in order of liquidity. This is normally the case for banks and other financial institutions. IAS-1 also permits a mixed presentation, presenting some assets and liability, liabilities using a current and non-current classification and others in order of liquidity. This may be appropriate when the entity has diverse operations. Whichever method is used, IAS-1 requires the disclosure of items that are expected to be recovered or settled within 12 months and beyond 12 months after the reporting period. A classified presentation highlights an entity's working capital and facilitates the computation of liquidity and solvency ratios. So all other assets and liabilities are classified as non-current. The operating cycle, the operating cycle of an entity is the time between the acquisition of assets for processing and the re realization in cash or cash equivalents. When the entity's normal operating cycle is not clearly identifiable, it is assumed to be 12 months. 
So assets and liabilities that are realized or settled as part of the entity's normal operating cycle, such as trade receivables, inventory, trade payables, and some accruals for employee and other operating costs, are presented as current even if they are expected to be realized or settled beyond 12 months after the reporting period. Assets and liabilities that do not form part of the entity's normal operating cycle, such as your non-operating assets and liabilities, are presented as current only when they are expected to be realized or settled within 12 months after the reporting period. Deferred tax assets and liabilities are always presented as non-current items in a classified state statement of financial position regardless of their expected dates of reversal. So for your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, this may be presented in two manners. You have your single statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income or your statement of comprehensive income. And the other one is through two statements. First is your statement of profit or loss or your income statement and the other one is your statement presenting compre comprehensive income. So profit or loss is income less expenses, excluding the components of other comprehensive income. The excess of income over expenses is profit, while the deficiency is loss. This method of computing for profit or loss is called the transaction approach. Income and expenses are usually recognized in a profit or loss unless, first, they are, they are items of other comprehensive income, and the other is if they are required by other IFRS to be recognized outside of profit or loss. The profit or loss section shows line items that present the following amounts for the period. You have your revenue presenting separate interest revenue. Second, are your finance costs. Third are your gains and losses arising from the recognition of financial assets measured at amortized cost. Fourth is your impairment losses and the impairment gains of financial assets. Fifth um, are your gains and losses on reclassification of financial assets from amortized cost or fair, value, or fair value through other comprehensive income to fair value through profit or loss. Sixth is your share in profit or loss associated of associates and joint ventures. Seventh are your tax expenses. And eighth are, your result, are the result of your discontinued operations. Additional line items shall be presented whenever relevant to the understanding of the entity's financial performance. The nature and amount of material items of income or expense shall be disclosed separately. Circumstances that would give rise to the separate disclosure disclosure of items of income and expense include the following. First, are your write-downs of inventories to net realizable var value or of property, plant, and equipment to recoverable amount, as well as reversals of such write-downs. Second, are the structurings of the activities of an entity and reversals of any provisions for restructuring costs. Third, are your disposals of your items of PPE disposal of investments. Um, fourth is, are your discontinued operations. Fifth are your litigation settlements. And last are your other reversals for provisions. IAS1 prohibits the presentation of extraordinary items in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income or in the notes. So there are also two types of presenting expenses. First is your nature of expense method, and the other one is your function of expense method. So in the nature of expense method, expenses are aggregated according to their nature. For example, depreciation, purchases of materials, transport costs, employee benefits, and advertising costs, which are not reallocated according to their functions within the entity. While for your function of expense method or your cost of sales method, um, an entity classifies expenses according to their function, for example, cost of sales, distribution cost, ad admin expense, and other functional classifications. At a minimum, cost of sales shall, shall be presented separately from other expenses. The nature of expense method 
is simpler to apply because it eliminates considerable judgment needed in reallocating expenses according to their function. However, an entity shall choose whichever method it deems will provide information that is reliable and more relevant, taking into account historical and industry factors and the entity's nature. If the function of expense method is used, additional disclosures on the nature of expenses shall be provided, including depreciation and amortization expense and employee benefits expense. This information is useful in predicting future cash flows. Other comprehensive income or OCI comprises items of income and expense, including reclassification of adjustments that are not recognized in profit or loss as required or permitted by other IFRS. So the components of OCI include the following. Your changes in revaluation surplus, remeasurements of the net defined benefit liability or asset, gains and losses on, on investments designated or measured at fair value through OCI, gains and losses arising from translating the financial statements of a foreign operation, effective portion of gains and losses on hedging instruments in a cash flow hedge, changes in fair value of a financial liability designated at fair value through profit or loss that are attributable to changes in credit risk, changes in the time value of option when the options in strict value and time value are separated and only the changes in the in strict value is designated as the hedging instrument. And last is the changes in the value of the forward elements and forward contracts when separating the forward element and spot element of a forward contract and designating as the hedging instrument only the changes in the spot element and changes in the value of a foreign currency basis spread of a financial instrument when excluding it from the designation of that financial instrument as the hedging instrument. Amounts recognized in OCI are usually accumulated as separate components of equity. Cumulative changes in revaluation surplus are, accumulate, are accumulated in a revaluation surplus account, which is presented as a separate component of equity. Cumulative gains and losses from investments in fair value through OCI and from trans, translation of foreign operations are also accumulated in some separate equity amounts. So last for your statement of comprehensive income, the total comprehensive income is the change in equity during a period resulting from transactions and other events other than those changes resulting from transactions with owners and their capacity as owners. Total comprehensive income is the sum of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. It comprises all non-owner changes in equity, presenting information on comprehensive income and not just profit or loss helps user better assess the overall financial performance of the entity. So third um, statement is your statement of changes in equity. So the statement of changes in equity shows the following information. First, the effects of changes in accounting policy, um, your retrospective application or correction of prior period error or your retrospective restatement. Second is your total comprehensive income for the period. And last are your, for each component of equity, a reconciliation between the carrying amount at the beginning and at and the end of the period, showing separately the changes resulting from, first, your profit or loss, second is your other comprehensive income, and Last are your transaction with owners, such as contributions by and distributions to owners. Retrospective adjustments and retrospective restatements are presented in the statement of changes in equity as, adjust, as adjustments to the opening balance of retained earnings rather than as changes in equity during the period. Components of equity include, for example, each class of contributed equity the accumulated balance of each class of other comprehensive income and retained earnings. 
IAS 1 allows the disclosure of dividends and the related amount per share either in the statement of changes in equity or in the notes. So for your statement of cash flows, um, um, the purpose of, the, of this financial statement is to present information on the inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents during the reporting period. The information presented in the statement of cash flows assist users in assessing the entity's ability to remain solvent and provide returns to investor and creditors. So your statement in your statement of cash flows, you have here your operating activities, your financing activities, as well as your investing activities. Um, the notes to financial statements um, provides information in addition to those presented in the other financial statements. It is an integral part of a complete set of financial statements. All other financial statements are intended to be read in conjunction with the notes. Accordingly, information in the other financial statements shall be cross-referred to the notes. IAS-1 requires an entity to present the notes in a systematic manner. Notes are normally structured as follows. Um, first, um, you present first in the, notes, in the notes the general information on the reporting entity. Second in the notes are, are the statement of compliance with the IFRS and basis of preparation of financial statements. Third are the summary of significant accounting policies. Fourth are your disaggregation or breakdowns of the line items in the other financial statements and other supporting information. Fifth are your dis other disclosures required by IFRS, and last, last, last to be disclosed, last to be disclosed are the other disclosures not required by IFRS, but the management deems relevant to the understanding of the financial statements. Notes are prepared in a necessarily detailed manner. So more, more, more often than not, they are voluminous and occupy a bulk portion of the financial statements. For that reason, only excerpts of notes to the financial statements are provided below, sufficient to give you an idea of how the concept discussed are presented in the notes. Okay. So the last, this is your six um, component of financial statements, your additional statement of financial position when required. So we will discuss this in the um, next chapter. So for comparative purposes, the financial statements shall provide the same set of, of information for the preceding year. Requirement for an additional statement of financial position. As mentioned earlier, the complete set of FS includes an additional statement of financial position when certain instances occur. Those instances are, are as follows. First, the entity applies an, an accounting policy retrospectively, makes a retrospective restatement of items in its financial statements, or reclassifies items in its financial statements. And the next instance is the instance in the first instance has a material effect on the information in the statement of financial position at the beginning of the preceding example. So what you have to prepare is in, in, in a normal financial statement, you only present the, for example, to the, the year, um, the financial position is for the year ended um, December 31, 2020. So the comparative um, financial statement for that one would be December 31, 2019. But in case there is a need to present the sixth component of financial statement, we will have to present um, a third financial position statement, of, a third statement of financial position dated January 1, January 1, 2019. Okay, so that would be your third comparative period. So the opening. So the opening or additional statement of financial position is dated as at the beginning of the preceding year, even if the entity presents comparative information for earlier periods. 
the entity need not present the related notes to the opening statement of financial position.